Many students come to the UK, choose a course that isn't in demand and then struggle to find jobs, especially visa sponsored roles. If you're one of those students and your course is on the ineligible list for visa sponsorship, don't worry, you still have time to fix it provided you have at least one year left on your visa. That's why we have introduced four skills-based training programs designed to make you job ready. Number one is business analyst. Number two is data analyst. Number three is data engineer. And number four is data scientist. Now, each program requires three to four months of dedicated learning and hands-on practice. All sessions are one-to-one -one mentoring and not group classes. This is a paid program for serious candidates only. So if you're interested, make sure your email at yourknowledgebuddy at gmail.com. In today's video, we'll be discussing the roadmap for data engineers and Rajdeep will be your mentor if you decide to join our program. So if you want to start your career as a data engineer, make sure to stay with me until the end of this video. Without any further delay, let me introduce you to Rajdeep who will walk us through the complete data engineer roadmap. Hi Rajdeep, welcome once again to Your Knowledge Buddy. And if you don't mind, can you please introduce once again to my audience, please? Uh, yes. Hi, everyone. Uh, I am Raj Dev, working as a senior data engineer in a UK company uh, on the sponsored role. Uh, before moving to the UK for my master in big data analytics, uh, I worked as a, as a data engineer in India, and uh, I am also Microsoft certified data engineer. Thank, Thank you. you. And for guys, if you have seen the previous video, which we did around data analyst roadmap, maybe one month ago, uh, so Rajdeep will continue to be mentor for my audience for data analyst. And today we are introducing roadmap for data engineer. So first of all, so um, just want to let you know, uh, Rajdeep, now the questions that I've started getting from my students are data engineers are high skill jobs and data analysts, it is marked as medium skill. So people are more curious about what is the difference in data analyst and data engineer. And if they want to get started with data engineer, how can they do that? So with your help today, we'll go through the roadmap which you have prepared for, for our audience. So uh, yes, I have prepared something uh, for our audience uh, so that they, they can start their career as a data engineer, as a fresher as well. Uh, this roadmap will help them uh, to start their career as a uh, as a data engineer without any any experience. So uh, to explain, let me share my screen. Yeah. Uh, so before starting uh, a roadmap for the data engineer, I just want to introduce uh, some job opportunities available in the market. Uh, like some of uh, opportunities I mentioned here, uh, that is ETL developer, Azure data engineer, data warehouse engineer, BI architecture. But this is uh, not all the opportunities. You can uh, see other opportunities after completion of this course in the market. So uh, let's start with the, the week by week breakdown uh, for this roadmap. So Rajdeep, can I ask you a question? So say my yes. audience, they don't have any prior experience either as a data analyst or a data engineer, and they have not taken a master's course in that. Can they still start with this? So this is a roadmap for even fresh years, right? Uh, yes, uh, this is uh, very. This roadmap road, roadmap is very comfortable with uh, freshers as well because we are going to start uh, uh, learning Python, PySpark skills from the scratch. Even uh, having no experience in the coding, they can still start uh, learning as a, a, a learning from this roadmap as, as a data engineer and start their career in the same field. Awesome, great. Uh, so let's start with week by week breakdown. Uh, for week one, week two, uh, totally uh, we we are going to learn the Python fundamentals, uh, where you will learn uh, how to write the clean fun uh, clean code using the functions, loops, and conditional statements. And uh, in this week, we will also explore some uh, important structures available in the Python, uh, such as lists, tuples, dictionary, because these are the fundamental of the Python and you have to learn and you will see when you work as a data engineer, you will see these, uh, these kind of uh, uh, 
programming language you will use day to day life in your uh, in your career and by the end of this week and uh, you will be able to uh, write some scripts python scripts and you are able to uh, read the csv file and had, handle the missing values write the python codes and so on uh, we in the week 2 we will uh, mostly deep dive into our uh, file input and output operations uh, where you will learn how we can write write and uh, read the, any kind of uh, files uh, from the external sources in the in the python and then we will also explore some uh, important libraries available in the in the python such as pandas pandas is more widely used library uh, for a transformation in the data engineer so by the end of week 1 and week 2 you will have a basic understanding on the python as well as the libraries and uh, in each week you will uh, i will give you assignments and even in the class we will uh, we will uh, uh, do some uh, hands on activity so that you can familiarize with the with the python code how we can write this and then move to the week three that is the uh, uh, in week three we mostly focus on the apache spark so uh, we will see what is the apache spark and why it is important in the field of data engineer where we will learn different kind of components available in the apache spark its architecture how we can create the spark session and so on Similarly, in the same week, we will also explore different kind of data frames, such as uh, uh, di uh, different kind of data frames available in the Spark. And we will also perform some uh, operations on the data frame, such as filtering, selecting, transforming columns, and so on. By the end of week week three you will, now you will have a proper understanding what is going on behind the scene in the spark and you will be able to analyze the large large data set and you you also able to perform some basic operations and transformation on the top of that data set similarly for the uh, um, as in the week one, week two, I will give you assignments and then week three, I will again give you the assignment so that you you are very comfortable with the Apache Spark as well. So uh, guys, remember, this will be a very interactive session where you'll be given lots of assignments so that you have a hands-on. It's not just a theoretical session. So all the work that Rajdeep will be giving, uh, she will be reviewing your work and will be giving you feedback so that you understand the basics very well. Thank you, Rajdeep, over to you. Yes, and uh, then uh, we, uh, we are going to week four, and then there, uh, there like uh, we will explore some performance uh, tuning uh, techniques available inside the Spark, uh, because when you work in the real world, the data is very massive and complex, and it is not in the in the original format. It is the raw data, so you need to clean that and then perform some aggregations, joins on the top of that data to clean and to ready for the data analytics. So. So uh, sometimes your SQL query and Python code running running slow, and it is also impacting uh, at the back end your cost. So in order to tackle these kind of problems, there are some different kind of techniques available in the Spark. So these kind of techniques like broadcast join partitioning, why we need to reduce the shuffling and all uh, and so on so these kind of techniques we are going to learn in week four and week five by the end of this week four and five you will be able to write the optimized sql query and python code and you will uh, you will have a better understanding what kind of data you need to write on the disk or memory and how you can reduce the shuffling between the data at the back end Next, move to the week six. Before moving to the week six, this course is specially designed for the Microsoft Fabric uh, because there are other other uh, frameworks available in uh, inside the market such as uh, Azure Data Factory and Databricks. But I am taking here the Microsoft Fabric uh, because in the Microsoft Fabric it is the unified data engineer and future future prof proof data engineer platform where you can perform any kind of uh, an, any kind of task such as pipelines data flows uh, you can store the data inside the microsoft fabric and so on so uh, week 6 we will explore the microsoft fabric components uh, such as one lake lake house uh, 
what is the use of data flow gen two and how we can create the pipelines and automate we are automate the process uh, inside the pipelines and then uh, in the same week we will also explore some git fundamentals and version control for the best practice because when you work in the uh, organization you are working in a team on the same project so it is a very important important topic like version control and ci cd pipelines so that you can collaborate with your team as well and then by the end of week six, you are able to uh, create the Microsoft Fabric workspace. You can create the one lake inside the Microsoft Fabric. You can create a end-to-end -end pipeline to get the data from various sources and then store in the in the final location that is the one lake inside the Microsoft Fabric. Into the week eight and week nine, uh, this is this week all focus on the ETL pipelines where you will create an end-to-end pipeline by the combination of data flow gen 2 transformation and the spark notebook you will learn how you can utilize the pipeline to automate your process whatever the transformation you have done in the spark notebooks by using the sql or python code and whatever the transformation you you have uh, uh, utilized in the data flow gen 2 so these all all activities we can we can use in the pipelines and we can make the process automate to uh, uh, schedule that pipeline and uh, so that the re data refresh daily, weekly or monthly, whatever the business requirement. And then uh, move to the week nine, you will also learn if you are if your pipeline is failed due to any reason, how you can uh, you can see the logs for the root cause and how you can uh, you can get rid of the schema mismatch. If uh, if the source schema is uh, changed, then how you can uh, you can handle these kind of challenges in the real world and then um, move to the week 10. That is the lake house design. So uh, this is uh, uh, this is the component inside the Microsoft Fabric where you are going to store your data in one one location in in the Delta format. Uh, so here we will also explore the metallic architecture, which is the which is the most important architecture. Mostly organizations use this architecture. What happened in this architecture? You get the data from various sources and store in one one folder, say the bronze layer, and then perform some aggregation and transformation, clean clean the data and store back to the different folder. And then final layer is the uh, analytical layers that is used by the data analyst. So these kind of uh, architecture we are going to explore in week 10. Next, move to the week 11, where uh, this is all about the data warehouse. Now from start week one, we have a basic knowledge knowledge of Python, PySpark, and we also get the data from various sources and store in the one lake inside the Microsoft Fabric. Now it's time to create the data warehouse on the top of that that one lake where you will create you will learn how you can create the star schema what is the important of dimensional and fact tables uh, along with this you will also see how we can query the data in the data warehouse inside the microsoft fabric and then uh, you will also learn how you can monitor the data warehouse and restrict the uh, sensitive data to access by everyone so by the end of this week, you will be able to create a data warehouse for your for your data and also as well as you are also able to implement the row level security to restrict the data. And then finally, we move to the week 12, where you will learn uh, the different component that is available in the Microsoft Fabric, such as event streaming, that is mostly deal with the real time data, like streaming data, data come and then you analyze that data inside the Power BI. So these kind of pipelines we are going to build inside the uh, streaming data in week 12. By the end of this, this week, you will be you will be learn how you analyze how you can analyze the real time data and refresh your uh, Power BI reports and so on based on the real data. Uh, week thirteen, uh, week thirteen is DevOps and governance where you will 
maintain the CI/CD pipeline inside the Microsoft Fabric, and you will also learn how you can manage your Microsoft Fabric capacity because the Microsoft Fabric work on the capacity. You have to manage that uh, when you work. a large and complex data there are a lot of temporary files has been created behind behind the scenes so these kind of activities how you can monitor and get the rate of temporary files to release the memory inside the microsoft fabric and then uh, we will uh, uh, then we move to the week 14 where bi integration and analytics so now we are already clean our data and our, uh, our our cleaned data is available in the data warehouse now it's time to represent their data in front of the stakeholders in the form of visualization for that we are using the power bi connectivity where you will you will connect your power bi with the with the data warehouse and create the report for the end user and next week 15 it is uh, all about uh, uh, you will work on the real time projects where where i will give you a document of the business requirements and you will create a first one lake and then data warehouse and then create the report on the top of that uh, that uh, data warehouse and then Uh, week sixteen is all about your interview preparation and mock uh, mock interviews would be there question and answers on common interview questions. Okay, uh, thank you. Thanks, Rajdeep. I just wanted to add that in week sixteen, again, uh, we can hold more sessions for the guys to help you how to um, navigate the UK job market. Given that the UK ma job market is tough, so I am going to give you some tips. which are the best job sites you should be using which are the companies you should be targeting i have access to the database of those companies who sponsored maximum uh, people last year so you should be targeting that what is linkedin personal branding so there will be a lot of informative session at the end once you finish the core of data engineering so that it will help you land your first job at least in the uk uh rasteep that was a really nice road map for everyone i just wanted to ask you a couple of questions uh so if anybody wants to, anybody start, wants to start what is the first thing they need they need like a laptop they need to have a laptop do they need to install something on the laptop as well uh like the tools that you were mentioning license uh Yes. Uh, if everyone wants to start as a data engineer, uh, so they they definitely uh, they should have a laptop. And uh, for the Microsoft Fabric uh, particular, uh, they need to register themselves uh, inside the Microsoft Fabric website, and then they can create the login and create uh, like I think uh, for three months, Microsoft Fabric providing free of uh, uh, free of cap uh, capacity uh, to practice uh, uh, some pipelines. and uh, data flow gen 2 and clean the data uh, lake storage as well uh, so uh, yes the logins creation uh, should be there okay. before starting okay yes. thank you any final tips recommendation from you before we wrap today's video uh yes uh, i just want to uh, uh want to tell you like uh, uh, just start from uh, from very basic if you really want to crack a job as a data engineer even as a fresher uh, if you have a basic knowledge of python pyspark and different type of work frames like databricks azure data azure data factory and microsoft fabric you will definitely get a job as a data engineer as, as a junior data engineer Okay, awesome. Thank you. Uh, so, on that note, guys, if you're interested, if you want to learn uh, from Rajdeep how to become a data engineer or data analyst, she will be the mentor for both the course. You can reach out to us at yourknowledgebuddy at gmail dot com, and you can ask questions, and I can provide more details. Thank you very much, Rajdeep. Thank you for coming and recording this video. Thank you.